Today I want to show you a special type of email that you can use to connect your product with a, a cool story, a news piece, uh, some trivia, or something interesting for people. Uh, and this is great because uh, instead of just giving them a straight up pitch, you can basically hijack their attention and build some rapport with them, build some interest in them for your product without actually talking about your product but instead talking about a specific story or something that happened in the past at some time. So this is called the correlation email and the name basically gives it away. It's called correlation email because you correlate two things that are similar. You take your product, find one aspect of it that could correlate to some sort of story that's going on in your life or uh, that you heard about, or in this case, again, a historical story, and you basically create like a, a metaphor between the two or an analogy between the two, and this is awesome because you can uh, <laughs> you can get people to read more of your copy uh, before actually giving them the pitch, which means they'll be much more warmed up when they actually receive the pitch. And you don't have to sell it that hard because you've already shifted many of those beliefs that we talked about in previous videos and, uh, and you hinted at the transformation as well. So this email is a great example. It was written by Ian Stanley uh, and Derek Johansson, uh, two amazing copywriters. And by the way, this email comes straight from Derek's uh, program called Daily Email Income. You're gonna find a link to that program uh, in the description section of this video. It doesn't have a fancy sales page yet because it's a, still a, a very new program, but it has uh, a, like a Google Doc basically uh, with the description of what's inside the program. Uh, and he can get away with this because the program is really good. Like I'm also following this uh, and uh, it's helping me a lot uh, to, uh, to basically uh, find the correct types of emails to break down for this challenge. So definitely recommend you check it out. Um, but this email is pretty cool. It's a little bit more advanced. Uh, so I'm just letting you know uh, upfront because there's, there are a lot of uh, more advanced copywriting and, uh, and, and uh, marketing things that are going on here. However, as we're gonna go through it, you're gonna see that it doesn't sound like sophisticated copy and that's good. The best copy always, always sounds exactly like he, how people talk. And it's very difficult to write copy that doesn't sound like copy, but it's, it's the interesting thing that we, uh, we copywriters have to do. Uh, try to mimic how people actually talk while still embedding all those, um, all those um, persuasion triggers and, uh, and elements that are needed for people to actually convert. So uh, I think you're gonna enjoy it. And the reason why I chose this is because it's, it's a great way on how you can send people a sales email or a nurture email or something like that. And even though you only have a single, like check it out here, call to action link at the, at the end. And you know, almost like almost nothing about the product itself, just a high level overview in a few paragraphs. But the reason why this works is because the story aspect of it uh, does the heavy lift lifting for this email. So I guarantee that if you send emails like this to your audience, your open rates and click through rates are going to like shoot up massively because people will feel like you're giving them a lot of value. They're reading something interesting. In this case, um, it's, a, it's a, a historical, the historic story of the Golden Gate Bridge and how that relates to bridging the gap in the minds of your customers. So again, it's it might seem a little bit more advanced, but bear with me and uh, I think you're gonna love it. And before we get started, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here because I'm breaking down tons of these emails videos lately and also share this video with others if, uh, if you find it helpful, that definitely helps a lot. So the subject line basically starts with the Golden Gate sales funnel. And uh, it straight up shows us that this is a correlation email because it correlates to specific things. The Golden Gate, and a sales funnel. So most people who are uh, who get this email, they're probably familiar with the, with the sales funnel. Uh, but then, how does that relate to Golden Gate? Well, let's find out. And uh, this uh, email was promoting a newsletter called Funnel Monthly. So uh, again, people they are familiar with sales funnels, but obviously they they want the best type of sales funnel or so, or something like that. 
uh, but uh, by teasing the Golden Gate sales funnel, it comes off as something something different. And again, uh, the story for this, a, a good quick tip, and again, I, I learned this from Derek, uh, is uh, on, his, on the History Channel website, there's uh, a sub page called This Day in History. And a lot of other you know, uh, tools are also available that are quite similar to this. But This Day in History, basically, based on your day, your current day, it brings up something that happened, I don't know, 80 years ago in the past, something interesting. And then there's a little story about that. Well, you could use something like that to start your email. And all the best email copywriters usually do this, like the uh, Ian Stanleys, the, the Ben Settles, the Chris Orzakowskis, they all do this. Uh, they use some sort of obscure story from the past and they correlate it to something that you wanna say right now. So the email buddy it, uh, itself starts with 78 years ago, the Golden Gate Bridge was opened to the public. So we set the stage, it's right, in, right like we start in the middle of the action, I mean action, uh, we start, like there's no beating around the bush, there's no warm up copy here, we just say something that happened. And then we have a paragraph that adds more historic con context. It's like, hey, this was the longest suspension bridge till 1967. Uh, and then we have a little paragraph that connects this, this mini story. It's a very mini story, actually, uh, to the present day. So basically, Derek or Ian, I don't know exactly who wrote this email because like, uh, they were both involved. But let's say it's Ian. And he says, I happened to be in San Francisco that, uh, this last weekend for the Memorial Day weekend and saw the Golden Gate Bridge from afar. I've seen it many times and driven across it multiple times, and it still amazes me every time I see it. So this connects the, the glory of the bridge to today, uh, but I think a more advanced thing that's happening here is that um, Derek is trying to um, create feelings of nostalgia or create feelings of patriotism or awe when it comes to this bridge in people so that uh, when he starts talking about uh, about his uh, his marketing argument, essentially, uh, people are in a better emotional mood here. They're 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 probably more receptive to something cool because they've just been warmed up that this bridge is so cool. It's a this is a more advanced cognitive psychology psychology thing, but just bear with me. It works. Um, so then, uh, direct. Okay, I'm just gonna go with Derek from now on. Get Derek or Ian. I don't know exactly who wrote the email, but since uh, the, the front name is Derek, then let's go with Derek. So uh, Derek then starts talking about his personal fascination with the bridge, the sheer amount of engineering that went to, into it. It blows his mind. So again, it just uh, it's, it pays tribute to the, uh, to the ingeniousness of the bridge itself. And then he also talks about the bridge's why. It's like, however, no matter how amazing it is, it still performs the same function as every other bridge. Uh, to take you from point A to point B in the shortest distance possible without you falling into water or plunging you to your death in a deep canyon below. So uh, yes, what's the why of this bridge? It's to take you from point A to point B. And obviously there are many ways to go from point A to point B, especially if you wanna go consistently from point A to point B. But I think this is just here to just add more context uh, about the bridge itself and, to, and to, um, to gradually start people warming up to the idea of getting from point A to point B and eventually the email is gonna start talking about if you wanna sell someone, you have to take them from point A to point B. So that's the whole point of this. It doesn't sound like it, it, it sounds like, uh, it may sound actually like, uh, you know, uh, like this part doesn't really make any sense or like why is he talking about this? But it's, uh, it adds more context to the whole thing and it starts uh, sowing the idea, it, it starts seeding the idea of, of, of the things that he's gonna talk about um, a little bit later. Then he continues with a powerful metaphor. So this is the part where we relate, we correlate the bridge to a sales funnel, basically. So he says, selling your products pretty much follows the same concepts 
as building a bridge. Your prospect is one side of the water. Their destination is on the other side of the water. Where they are now is point A. Where they want to be is point B. Your sales funnel is the bridge. So remember in a few previous videos, and again, link in the description to the entire playlist, to the entire 50-day proven email breakdown playlist, we talked about uh, the fact that if you want to convert someone, a lead into a buyer, into a customer, then you have to sell them a transformation. It's always a transformation that's happening. People are buying transformations. They're basically buying a better version of themselves so that they don't feel the emotional pain that comes with experiencing the current problems that they're having. So that's what they're buying. And by, um, by relating to this to the bridge itself, to the image of the bridge, it just makes sense for people. The, one of the best ways to understand uh, to make them understand that you're selling people a transformation, a journey that gets them from point A to point B is to come up with the image of a bridge, right? So it just makes sense. It's so natural. And then he, he goes into more detail. Uh, basically, he seeds the crossroads close. Again, if you've been familiar with my stuff uh, for some time, if you've been following along, you know about the crossroads close. And I've covered this before in some past videos. It's basically the point in your sales letter or sales message where you give people a few options. You can say, you know, dear prospect, either you uh, keep doing what you've been doing for for so long and then you're going to keep struggling and nothing's going to change and you're not going to experience all those amazing results that you're looking for. Or you, uh, you, you do something today, you take a risk-free trial of something, uh, you give it a try, you can't lose because you're obviously uh, like uh, protected by a money-back guarantee or something like that, but you do something and then everything is gonna change or like it has the potential of changing. And then by uh, including this element here, I think Derek, like, like he did it because he wanted to preemptively seed the crossroads close here which is traditionally at the end of the sales argument. So again, as I said, this is a more advanced email breakdown uh, and there are a lot of these advanced things happening here, but uh, I think it's effective because again, it puts people in the right mindset. It puts, puts them in the right, um, like it, it, it establishes the right buying criteria for them so that when they get to the pitch at the end of the email, you don't need to hard pitch them or hard sell them because they're already, all those beliefs that ha that needs to be shifted have been shifted. Um, so um, yeah, he talks about the three options and then he adds more, he unpacks this whole idea. He basically uh, provides us with a metaphor of three core things people need to actually buy. So he even says that, uh, but, and this is a big but, there are a few criteria they need to know before they'll cross the bridge. First and foremost, do they actually want or need to get on the other side? And this is basically, it talks about the bridge and a real life situation that people might experience. But on a deeper level, it also talks about how people actually buy something, how they turn from non-subscriber, non-buyers to buyers. And this first part, it relates to uh, Eugene Schwartz's idea of tapping into their existing desires. A very, very important idea in copywriting and, and direct marketing. And uh, I broke down several uh, Eugene Schwartz sales letters. By the way, link in the description to the entire 100-day uh, proven sales letter breakdown challenge. Uh, so check that out because uh, it's, uh, it's going to give you more context about this this uh, mass desire that he talked about. But this part relates to the mass desire. Second, do they trust the bridge will un withstand their weight and get them safely to their destination? So this has something to do with proof. It, um, uh, each time you make a promise or you wanna sell someone something, you also have to show them proof that this, this actually works. And this is the second major criteria for people uh, to to buy something. And the third thing is, are they actually going to be able to cross the bridge? Is it too long, too many cracks in it, uh, too many people in their way or something like that? I think this part uh, refers to how much friction does your buying process have? Like, uh, is your offer easy to buy? Is the whole process of, of giving people 
what you're promising them easy. People want easy, they want frictionless. Every single friction point that you uh, introduce uh, in your funnel, for example, it usually lowers conversions. Obviously, this also has its caveats because sometimes, like how Ben Settle does it, and I broke down a Ben Settle email in my latest, my last video, uh, he actually gives people friction because he wants the best customers. He wants people who are willing to tolerate tolerate a little bit of friction instead of whining about it immediately. So, you know, you have to look at this thing from a higher perspective uh, and not just like treat it like an absolute, but in most cases, you definitely want to lower friction. So these parts, they, again, they give people value. They teach something. Notice that this is, this is very nice teaching. If you think about it, 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 uh, uh, teaches people the three fundamental essentials uh, of, of uh, converting people into customers while also relating it, relating it to the bridge metaphor. So it's, uh, it's very valuable. And uh, I think, uh, you know, it goes a long way for making people feel like, you know, I actually got something cool from Derek. And when the time comes to click, they're much more likely to click the link to the sales page. Then we have a little recap element here. And, um, and then uh, the email, like at this point, you know, we could start transitioning into the offer, but not quite yet because the next few parts relate to um, the length of copy of your copy or your funnel. So, uh, and it's natural. Again, it flows naturally from the story. Uh, it relates to the length of the bridge and check it out how he does it. Now, here's the thing. A bridge should only be as long or as short as it needs to be. There's no reason to build a long bridge over a short creek. And obviously, there's no reason to build a short bridge over a long ocean. Uh, the destination dictates how long the bridge should be. So this is a very important uh, point when it comes to copy because uh, a lot of people also ask me like, Chaba, how long should my copy be? How long should my sales letter be or my email be? And it depends. It depends on how complex your offer is. It depends on how much belief shifting you have to do in order for people to get warmed up enough to buy. And um, it also depends on how complex your whole topic is. Uh, and it makes sense, again, related to the bridge, like the longer the ocean or the longer the water that you want to cross, the longer the bridge you need, the longer the the bigger the transformation you're promising, the, the, the longer the journey you're promising, uh, the longer your copy or your sales funnel has to be. And at the end of the day, the reason why you have sales funnels, the reason you have multiple steps in your sales funnels is because you're uh, strategically targeting people at those specific steps, steps with specific copy that relates to it. So the reason, again, why sales funnels have been invented is because of Eugene Schwartz. It's because of Eugene Schwartz's uh, stages of awareness concept. And again, you're going to find a video to that. I don't know if, if it's going to be linked or not, but just search for it. OK, so uh, if you're interested in this, just search for my YouTube, uh, search on my YouTube channel, uh, the five stages of awareness and watch that video because it's, it's, it's crucial. Um, and that's the reason why we have sales funnels and opt-in pages and email sequences and sales pages and retargeting ads. Uh, and Derek talks a little bit about the concept behind it. And he also expands the idea by talking about the selling the total transformation versus the partial transformation. Like if there's a lot of water, then you need a long bridge. You need brilliant engineering. You need lots and lots of time to create like a masterpiece. But if it's, a, it's just a creek or something. You don't need a sophisticated bridge. A basic fundamental understanding of engineering is going to be enough. And you need way less building materials. And you need way less time to actually build this compared to a longer bridge. And the same thing is true if you're selling a partial transformation. If you're just uh, giving people uh, a very quick a uh, small solution to one of their small problems. Like it's still a burning problem, but it's something that's easily solved. For example, let's say you give them um, like they don't know how to sp send uh, cool emails and then you give them like the ultimate email checklist, which you can actually get when you subscribe to my five part uh, email mini course. It's free. It's link in the description below, but uh, you get that and it solves a specific burning problem 
that re that that relates to your email marketing efforts right you get this ch this this checklist and if you cross everything off on the checklist then your email is going to crush it like that's it um and uh, and and that's why it's it's a partial transformation but if i were to uh turn you into a six figure email copywriter then obviously that would be a way longer transformation that would take take months maybe even a year or something like that. And to be fair, I'm not like this uh, Lamborghini overnight get rich quick guru who says, no, you can be a six figure email copywriter overnight or something because I don't really believe in that. However, if you uh, put in the work, then it's definitely achievable and it's definitely something that you can, uh, uh, you can do. Uh, but you need to, obviously the transformation needed for that, this is way bigger. Uh, and I do offer th that type of transformation as well. Uh, like I do, I still do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. And if you're interested in that, by the way, just send me an email, uh, Chaba, you know, C-S-A-B-A at gameofconvergence.com. Just send me an email uh, and we can talk about it. But just know that it's obviously different than like a Tripwire product. Uh, however, this email talks about a Tripwire product and we have a beautiful transition um, from this whole bridge story and uh, like the transformation that's needed um, to the unique mechanism of the product that's sold and it's the tripwire. So Derek says, I'd rather build a short bridge to start, get people to trust my work and then get them to cross my big bridge later on. This is where the tripwire comes in. A tripwire is a low ticket offer that gets people to pay you a small sum of money in order to get a product or service of yours. The tripwire is your so short bridge. It's a way to build trust, create a buying relationship and solve a real problem all at once. So yes, at this point, it might not, not seem like a unique mechanism because if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with the, the concept of a tripwire, but uh, it's still something that, uh, uh, that for this audience, it makes sense and it acts as kind of like a unique mechanism or at least like a mechanism, even if it's not so unique anymore. But what a, what a beautiful transition from the uh, analogy of the short bridge to a tripwire product. It makes total sense and people get it instantly. And that's the, that's the point. Like you want to come up with an idea that people get instantly. It's not, it's not funny, it's not smart or something like that. People just get it, it makes sense. And again, it makes them much more likely to click the link because they've been warmed up for it. Um, so after this point, point uh, we get a few benefits of this tripwire strategy. But notice again, we're not talking about a product, even at this stage. We're talking about the mechanism, the mechanism. And again, this concept comes from the legendary Eugene Schwartz uh, and more specifically from his uh, five stages of market sophistication idea. So we talked about the five stages of market um, awareness, of, of, of customer awareness, uh, but now we have the five stages of market sophistication. Uh, and that's the, that's the part in which he talks about the mechanism. But this email also very smartly doesn't talk about the product yet, it talks about the mechanism and it introduces a few benefits that relate to this mechanism, which obviously the product is gonna have. So. For example, benefit number one, it takes a lot less time than building the next Golden Gate Bridge. So benefit number one, it's fast. Benefit number two and three, especially when you have an exact template you can use. So you have a template, it's easy, when the entire foundation and step-by-step -step instruction laid out for you. So it's fast, it's easy, and it's basically you can't fail because you're gonna have exact step-by-step -step instructions. And that's exactly what we've done in the first issue of Funnel Monthly. So I guess this was the email that launched uh, this newsletter, that launched Funnel Monthly. Um, they laid out the offer, the tripwire offer, in excruciating detail so you can have one up and running in your business in less than seven days from now. So we have a high level overview, we have a big promise here. Um, maybe some proof elements could have been in. Uh, used here, I think it would have made uh, the, the whole argument better, especially when the email here um, talks, talks about proof. Like the email itself talked about the three things that are needed, like, you know, to have an offer that people actually want, to back it up with proof, and uh, the third is to have like a pain-free 
buying process or something. This has the uh, the um, the promise that people want. This has the pain free uh, buying process, but it doesn't really have proof here. Probably like obviously in the sales page, they, they have proof, but not here. And I think uh, the email could be better if, if some minor like just just one um, one paragraph of proof would be included here or something like that. But basically we have like a high level overview, nothing crazy here, just something to build enough desire for people to click the uh, the call to action. And then before the call to action, we have one more like recap of the whole offer. Uh, it basically says it's, it's the big promise. Uh, and most importantly, we give you a step-by-step -step formula and structure you can use to write your sales letter or VSL for your tripwire in under 48 hours. So like, what else do you need? Like you have everything you need to, uh, like you have in the promise, I mean, the promise itself, uh, it lays out exactly what you're gonna get. What, what's the promise of, 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 of the transformation that you're gonna get. So it's not gonna revolutionize your business or make you a millionaire overnight, but you get the exact step-by-step -step formula and structure to write your sales letter or VSL for the tripwire. So it's a tripwire specific sales letter, which is like way shorter and way less complicated than like a long form sales letter, which is kind of like the long, the, the Golden Gate Bridge in this, uh, in this analogy. Uh, and you can do it under 48 hours. Interested? Check it out here. So in, like you see, we just have like a philosophical question like interested. Uh, people are like, yeah, I'm interested. Uh, there's the link and just some very basic sign off. Very simple. But the reason why they can get away with this is because uh, the audience has been warmed up after reading this email. And notice there's no links before that. There are two strategies when it comes to, uh, you know, putting links in your emails. Either you also put them uh, earlier on, like in the beginning as well, and in the end and in the middle, like you use multiple links. Uh, but the risk with that is that if people click the link too early and they land on the sales page and they haven't been warmed up enough, their beliefs haven't been shifted enough and they just make an internal decision of like, you know, this is actually not for me or I don't like it or I, I, I yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take a look at it later or something. They're not going to buy and they disqualify your product immediately. Yes, the click through rates are going to be higher because obviously if you put a link in the first uh, first uh, uh, like line here, more people are going to click than at the very end of this email. But your conversion rates might your I mean your conversion to customer rates uh, might actually be lower because a lot of people who click this link, this link, they haven't read the email, they haven't been warmed enough for the sales message, and they're just gonna bounce from the sales page because they just wanna check out like what this thing is about. So it's definitely a trade-off and there are two schools of thoughts here, but it's something to keep in mind. And this email, per I think purposefully chose to only include the link at the end because, um, because they only want people on the sales page who are at least committed enough to read this and who are warmed up enough to uh, actually be much more likely to, act, to read more of the sales page and to buy. Because they read this, they're much more likely to read more, right? The more, you, the more people read, the more they consume your copy, the more likely they are to actually uh, become a customer. And Dan Kennedy actually once said that the biggest uh, predictor of 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 uh, of sales or the success of your sales message is how how much time people are willing to invest in reading or consuming your sales message the more they are consuming the more likely they are to buy and one of the easiest ways actually to uh to increase conversion rates is to it's his words not not mine is to double the length of your sales letter because once you double it uh, you can introduce more proof elements, you can uh, make your story more engaging, you can use more stories, you can have a more, like a better lead, the beginning part of the sales letter, uh, you can uh, make a better marketing argument here. And, uh, and, and, again, and as people, you know, they spend more time uh, reading your message, they will feel like since they invested so much time in consuming your, your message, uh, they, they kind of owe it to themselves to, to finish the whole thing by buying your product. Uh, but let's not get into this. This is a more advanced uh, cognitive psychological thing again. Uh, 
But yeah, that's the email. Uh, <laughs> this video is pretty long, for, sorry about that. But it's, as I said, it's a more advanced type of email. A lot of things going on here, uh, even though it doesn't really sound like a marketing email, right? Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this with someone else, it helps a lot. And leave a comment with, uh, with uh, something that, I don't know, uh, something that uh, came to mind as you, uh, as you watch this video, uh, your number one insight, something you disagree with that I said, or something like that. Um, I've been getting less comments on my videos lately, so uh, if you can leave a comment, after watching it, it definitely helps a lot. Um, but yeah, thanks again and uh, see you in the next one.